So it's another day, another another problem, of course. Getting the electrical smell coming out of the vent. Uh, the air's coming out. I noticed this the other day. Now it's getting stronger. So that means I get to crawl underneath the house and check out the air handler, see if I can find out what the problem is. It's got a funky smell to it. So something maybe be going wrong with the blower motor, loose wire or something. So let's crawl under there and see if we can find out. Okay, so you said made it under the house. And right off the bat, I can tell something don't sound right. I'm hearing a vibration. So let me get this panel off. See what I can find, see what's going on. Yep, that's a problem. Aha. Uh -huh. I think we got a fan wheel has ooh fell apart or something something's not right i think maybe the motor bracket broke that's what's making my crazy smell well fun what fun now we get to try to get that out drag it out and get out that hole way down over yonder okay so i need to get me Hopefully I got enough tools in my little tool pouch here to get this out. Otherwise I have to climb back out of here. All right, let's dig for some tools. Okay, so I wasn't lucky enough to have a socket that I needed, so I had to crawl out. Got me a small socket set. Took a 7 16 Got those two nuts loose. I got my, I got to mark my wires. So we got a purple wire. I took a picture of it. I know where it goes. Got that loose. Then I got black wire. Uh, Pulled off the sequencer, cut it off. All right, so we'll pull these wires out of here. And then we'll fight with this blower motor, try to get it out. By the way, the red wire is not plugged up to anything. It only, only uses two. All right, wires are out. loose all right now it's gonna take two hands to drag that big monster out take it down to the garage we'll dissect it see if we can't fix it tonight okay so in the garage found the problem the motor bracket has broken too and the bad thing is the bracket itself is made onto the motor so that would normally mean a new motor unless I can adapt a universal bracket to it I do have some brackets I keep in stock, so maybe I can find one and get lucky with this project because the motor seems is still good. So let's do a little dig and see what we can come up with. So before I can change this thing, I got this screw loosened here and I cleaned the rust off that shaft. I'm working it back and forth. I'm gonna try to get that motor off. Then got then got the three little brackets. Got these screws out here. Of course, the two of them broke off, so I get to tap those out, deal with that too. So, I've got everything else loose. I'm gonna try to get this motor out of here. To kind of turn it upside down on a bucket. If I can use the weight of the motor to pull on the shaft, and I'll just try to tap it with a punch and a hammer, try to get that motor to drop free. And then it'll give us a really good cleaning. Because these 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 square cages, when they get all this crud built up on them. It, it screws up their airflow. They don't blow the air like they should. So I'm going to get all that nice and clean before I put it all back together. Okay, so here's my trick to getting these motors out. And of course, I cleaned up the shaft with some sandpaper, worked it back and forth. And just by working it back and forth, what I use here, because you've got a flat shaft, flat shaft, you got a flat spot on that shaft, and you put the crescent wrench on there and kind of work it back and forth. As you work it back and forth, it's, it's worked its way down that far just by the weight of the motor. See the motor is pulling on it. I got it sitting on this trash can. So when I hit it, I got me a punch and a hammer. I'm going to give it a couple of love taps. Hopefully the way the motor will just drop it right out. So let me try that and see if I get lucky. Okay, so I'm going to try to get this on video for you. So I got it tapped down pretty good. Got this half inch drift punch. Put that in there. And see if we can't knock it out. You hear the motor fall down into the trash can. There it went. A couple of love taps. And the motor is now free.
So as you can see, we just lift this off. And there's our motor, safe and sound. It landed in the, in the garbage can. Now, hopefully I can get me a bracket. That bracket will fit on this. But before I do that, I'm going to get everything cleaned up real good because it is a nasty mess. So I'm going to take this little metal plate here loose so that way I can get this blower well out and give it a really good cleaning. Okay, so just four little sheet metal screws. Get that plate out of the way. And you can get in here and lift it right out. And you see how filthy it is. That really kills your airflow. So we're going to get all that shined up really good and uh, get this together here shortly. Okay, I took my hose to this thing. Got it shined up pretty good. Got all that crud off of it. Got that cleaned up. Looks a whole lot better than what it was. Got all that going on. So, you know, here's my belly, the belly band or motor bracket, whatever you call it. You can get these on Amazon. Uh, but what they're made for is when these things break off like this, instead of having to spend 150 bucks for a new motor, you just spend about 20 or 30 bucks for a new motor band and just clamp it on there. I think this is called a five and a half inch, I believe is what, what five and a quarter, five and a half. And you see how it clamps. But I got to deal with these brackets. I got to cut them off or do something about them. Got to deal with that. But I think my first project right now is I need to get these. I got two. I've already drilled that one out. I need to drill that one out and tap it and get that back to one quarter, one quarter twenty, I think is what that thread size is. So let's get that done first and then we'll see about getting this motor in there. All right, just a quick update, show what I'm doing. I started out with a small drill bit, drilled right through that screw that was broken off in there. Then I went to a larger size, a 1364, because a 1364 drill bit is what you need in order to tap it one quarter twenty. So I've got my one quarter twenty tap here. So I'm about ready to tap, tap that one, but I need to drill this one out. So it's the same size as this. We'll cut, cut new threads and uh, we'll have that part finished. Okay, so I've got it tap, tap now. Threads are nice and clean, so I get me a new bolt in there. I realize not everybody's got tools like this, but you can invest in tools, because if you do so, then in the future, they quickly pay for themselves. If you're going to be fixing stuff. And of course, there's all, you know, nowadays it's easy. You can teach yourself about anything, thanks to YouTube. So don't be afraid. Got to turn fixing stuff. All right, so I'm going to tap that one, and then we'll keep moving forward. So the next step is we got to get these old brackets off, so we can put the new band on there. You can see I, I sheared it off. All I gotta do is just take a little hammer and a chisel, just like this. A few love taps, and it shears it right off. So we'll get that done, and uh, we'll make sure the band fits, and we'll we'll have this thing together before you know it. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is add life to this motor. Because you notice a lot of these new motors they're sealed up; they don't have little areas where you can put oil in them anymore. But we can get around that. Just pop that cap off there. And right there's our bearing. And let's go squirty squirt just like this. Put the cap back on. And we'll get a maybe we get another 10 or 20 years out of this motor, you never know. I'll flip it over, do it the same to the other side. Okay, same thing with the other side. Pop the cap off, put a little oil on there. Get it lubed up good. Yeah, just take the hammer, tap it back in there. So uh, we're ready to put this motor back in that blower housing. Okay, belly band is mounted. I'm doing a dry run here just to make sure this shaft, everything's nice and clean. I sand off all that rust so it slides on on and off real easy. And there's the new band, all in place. And let's just drop it in that housing and get things lined up. Okay, we're about ready for a test run. Got the belly band installed, tightened up to the blower housing. I got the wheel tightened up and I got it centered. So be sure you want to kind of get it centered here. Get the little piece back in. Everything's turning, nothing's rubbing. So I got access to 220 volts down here in my garage. So I'm gonna quickly wire it up, make sure it works. And then we'll crawl back into the house and see if I can't get my sweet pea some well-deserved air conditioning because it is like 82 degrees in the house right now. So I'm sure she'd appreciate some cool air. Okay, it's got, we've got 220 volts here. Let's see if I can do this with one hand and make this thing come on. Everything looks like it's wired up right. 
Let's touch this little wire here and don't touch them both of them. That would be bad. It's a working. All right, good to go. Now we'll drag that back under the house and uh, try to put all this back together. Yep, so we made it back under the house. Got the blower set up in there. Remember we took pictures earlier, so we put our wires in the right spot. I'll put the wire back where it don't belong. And I'm just gonna put my black wire on the sequencer. Where'd it go? Black wire. Yep, black wire goes right up here. Alright. Good tight. Of course breaker is still off. Now I'm ready to turn the breaker on. Now remember sometimes with these thermostats they have like a five minute wait period when, once the power has been removed. So I'll have to lay here and wait for a while make sure it kicks back on. So, so I'll wait and we'll see. Hopefully everything will be nice and quiet and my sweet peel has some nice cool air up above. So while I'm waiting for the thermostat to engage, I always, whenever I get underneath the house I'm always bringing foil tape so I can tape up that gap right there or any gaps you see in, in your duct work or, or air handler. I'm going to fill that gap up with full tape get that make everything nice and efficient as possible. See, I got my full tape on, got everything sealed up tight. Now we're just waiting. She'll kick on here just shortly. We'll see what it sounds like. So I'm happening. I hear the Freon pumping through the lines. Waiting for the sequencer to warm up. Should engage shortly. Here it went. Yeah, ain't that much better? I heard that noise we had a couple hours ago. Alright, so now I just gotta put this panel back on there and go inside and enjoy some nice cool air. Okay, you see I got everything all put back together and now we'll head back into the house and make sure everything's cooling properly. Pick up my little toolbox and get the heck out from under here with all these bugs and spiders and creepy crawlies. Alright. Back in the house, you can see vent temperature here. Yeah, 71 degrees, 70. But look at the, I told you it was warm, check it out. 88 degrees in this house. Nice and warm, but we'll get it cooled off. And so let's recap. What the, what this little project cost me right here? $30, God went ahead and ordered me two more of these. I'll use my last one. So I keep those on hand with, with all the rentals. I'm always, this happens from time to time. Not too often, but at least I can be prepared when it does. So for 30 bucks, we, we got air. We're, we're back in business a few hours later. But just imagine, you know, if you had to call somebody and, and pay this to be done, you know, they, they probably just put in a new motor, probably, you know, $150, $200 for a new motor, plus a service call. And they most likely wouldn't have the motor on the truck. So they'd have to go order one or go get one the next day, come back. You'd be a couple of days without air, have a four or $500 repair bill. But anyway, Fix, fix it yourself. You can save yourself a bunch of money. Thanks for watching. Have a blessed day. See you. Bye.